My name is Amanda and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about my next TBR. If you saw my last TBR, you're going to be like, didn't you talk about that book and didn't you talk about that book and didn't you talk about that book? <laughs> because I am carrying over a lot of books that were on my last TBR to this one. So I have made quite a few changes. I have, I hope, gotten smarter about how I'm doing this because if you had asked me three months ago, am I a mood reader or not? I would have said no. I just read whatever is the next thing on my list. And generally speaking, that is still really true. However, I feel like I'm a FOMO reader and that means that if I have my list all made up and I'm going down my list and somebody says, hey, I'm gonna be reading this book tomorrow, I'm like, oh, I can, I can squeeze that in. And so then I just slide a new book in there or if I am at dinner, this happened, if I'm at dinner and somebody's talking about a book and they're like, oh yeah, I'm part of a book club. I'm like, wait, what? There's a book club that I wasn't a part of? I need to immediately join that book club, get the book so and read it so that I'm ready for the discussion in four days. So those things keep happening to me. And so my beautiful TBR that I have created and that I follow gets pushed further and further and further down as these new things just pop in there. I am still reading 20 something books a month. And so what I have decided to do is cut my list down to only 15 books, my list to 15. And then as things pop up, I won't feel as bad about saying, yeah, let me add that book in. And so that's how I'm gonna do it going forward. However, <laughs> I have joined a readathon for October. We are going to switch over to my computer and I'm gonna show you how October is actually gonna be different than what I want to do moving forward. But let's check it out. Okay, if you've been here for one of my TBR creations, you know that I follow this pattern right here for how I make my TBR list. And I have changed a few things to reflect what I was talking about before where I want it to be 15 books. So I've cut down my NPR challenge books from six to just three. I have cut down my new authors to just one roll of the dice instead of two dice, two die. I have cut down a couple of other things. I still have my author catalog and I still have Klaus's list. I'm still doing the Dark Tower read along. Like I haven't stopped anything that I was already doing. I'm just going at a I'm just picking less books, but that's not starting this month. This month, I am doing Trick or Treat-a-thon, and they gave us all teams. We had to sign up for teams, and then we had to sign up. I mean, and then we get to pick the prompts that we're going to put onto our bingo board. So I am not going to write all these prompts out. I'm just going to read the prompts and then I'll put up the book that I am picking to go with that prompt. So here is what my completed bingo board looks like. You get to pick the numbers in the order that you want them to be and however you want them to go. So the only one that I had to do was my team prompt, which was the mystery candy number 33. And the prompt is message your team captain or host for a random prompt or book. So I asked my team captain and she said, pick a book with a purple cover. So I did the same thing that I usually do. I went to Storygraph, I scrolled down through my latest, I mean, earliest added filter. And I found, I wish you all the best. So this has some purple on the cover. So that's what I'm counting. So I'm just gonna start at the top and go across and I will read the prompt and then I will tell you the book that I picked. So for number four, Campfire Stories, read a book under 200 pages. And I picked Lost and Found in Harlem. I know this has been on my list since July, I think. So I really wanna read this book. So I'm gonna get it done. Number 24 is, cause it's a thriller, read a book with zombies or a thriller. So I'm reading Zombie Bake Off by Stephen Graham Jones. This will be my Stephen Graham Jones book for the month. 
Number eight, Witching Hour. Read a book with witches or wizard. And I'm going to read my next Dresden file book. That fits in with my TBR anyway. Number 10, Corn Maze. Read a book that has mazes or labyrinths. So I don't like to know a lot about the books that I'm reading, but this has a labyrinth on the front. And I kind of read the description and it seems to be about a boy who creates these elaborate game things for his friends. So I'm hoping that it has to do with mazes. I mean, the whole cover of this book is a maze. So I'm counting it. Number 12, Costume Party. Read a cover by book. So I love the cover on this Red Moon book. And so that's what I'm putting in there. Number 16, Haunted House. Read a book that's set in a creepy or scary location. So I'm going to read my next Dritz book for that because it's in the Underdark and they have giant spiders. It's scary down there. The next one is number three, Whispers in the Dark. Listen to an audiobook. That's going to cover a lot of them. But for this specifically, I just picked Calamity, which is my next Brandon Sanderson book in the series I'm reading. Number 30 is Sugar Skull. Read a middle grade book. And I'm going to read The Girl Who Circumnavigated the Earth in a Ship of Her Own Making. I hope that's what it is because I just... I just tried to do that from memory. This one popped up as well on my story graph. I just went through looking for a middle grade. Number 15, Prankster, read a banned book. So my kids were actually helping me go through this list. And one of my sons was like, I think Animal Farm was banned. So I looked it up and it has been um, banned in quite a few countries. And, and it's on lists for being communist propaganda. So anyway. Uh, I'm reading Animal Farm, which I've never read before. Okay, number 31, your first Halloween. Read something that was published the year you were born. Y'all, I had no idea so many creepy books were published the year I was born. So anyway, I just did a quick Google search and said, what books came out in 1977? And The Shining was at the top of the list. And I was like, come on, Stephen King. I'm reading The Shining. Okay, number 17, flirt with danger, read a romance. Well, No Holds Barred was a romance that I had on the TBR that I didn't get to, so I'm pushing that over. Number 23, festival food, read a book with food on the cover. A Deadly Inside Scoop was also on my TBR, and it has ice cream, so I'm moving it over. Next is number 26, let's do the time warp. Read a book with time traveling or set in the past or future. This one is one of the graphic novels that was on my list called Black Heroes of the Wild West, set in the past. So I'm going to be reading that. Number 28, Dusk. Read something dark or with night in the title. So The Atlas Six was also on my TBR and it's completely dark. So that's what I'm reading. Number 22, Trick or Treaters. Read a graphic novel, comic, or, or manga. I'm going to read Louisa, which is a graphic novel that I was already supposed to read. That's the theme. I'm sorry. You're seeing all these books again for the second time. Number 33, I already told you about. That's the prompt from my team captain. Number seven, movie night. Read a book that has a movie or TV adaptation and watch it. So I had quite a few options here because I'm reading quite a few Stephen King books and a lot of them have movie adaptations, but my The Borrowers, which was on my list already, of course, it has a movie that goes with it and I didn't know that and I thought, okay, that sounds like a great movie night. So I'm going to read The Borrowers and then I'm going to watch a movie. Number two, changes in the air. Read a book with fall colors on the cover. Yellow, red, green, orange, or brown. And I'm reading Traveling Shoes. I'm really reading it. Really reading it this time. Number 18, struck with fear. Read a book in the same spot. So like, stay there and read the whole book. So I've already picked out the under 200 pages book, the... Um, Lost and Found in Harlem. And also, you'll see in just a second, I'm reading another short-ish book. And so I can easily just read in the same spot. It does say, if it's a longer book, just keep coming back to that spot to finish reading it. So that one's not adding an extra book. Thank you. Okay. Number 20, Screams. Read something scary. I am buddy reading The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones with Kate from The Literary Apothecary. This was my subscriber recommendation 
for last time and I didn't get to it. This is the first time I haven't gotten to it. So that's how I know I have too many books. Anyway, I'm going to read that with Kate and that's going to be my scary book. Number 32 is Slumber Party. Have a friend pick a book for you. So if you've seen any videos on my channel, I feel like I mentioned Heather in every video. But Heather from the Soggy Expat Book Nerd, I messaged her and I was like, hey, I need a book to read that's a recommendation from a friend. I don't really care about the genre, but please don't pick something huge because I already have a really huge book on this list. So she said, I just read The Shawshank Redemption by, St by Stephen King. What about that one? It's not too long. And I was like, absolutely, that sounds great. So I'm going to do The Shawshank Redemption. So that's another one that I could read all sitting in the same place. We'll see. Then number six is Harvest Moon. Read a book with a moon on or in the title. So... Undead and Unwed has a moon on the cover. So that's what I'm doing. Finally, number 27, Graveyards. Read, read a book with skulls or bones on the cover. And I have The Legend of Skeleton Man. So that is my, my everything on here. And if I read them all, I will fill up this whole bingo card. So what does that mean? That means that this is my October reading plan. Everything on this list fits these prompts except for the two towers books that I'm reading on the fantasy list and the lioness rampant which is my next Tamara Pierce book so I feel like this is doable I have quite a few short books on there oh how did I miss it okay I totally missed number 13 somehow read a book with 500 plus pages and I'm reading it so that has a thousand pages that definitely fits so here is my list, and other than it, which is really big, I have quite a few short ones, and, and then I have a couple of graphic novels. I just think that this is going to be doable. However, I cannot get distracted by other people's reading habits. <laughs> I cannot let other people's things that pop up and say, hey, do you wanna read this? Hey, I'm reading this. My answer is just no, across the board, for the whole month of October, it's no. I really want to focus on this list. Once I read all these things, I feel like I'll be caught up and like ready to move forward with normal, t normal TBRs and how I want to do that going forward. So there you go. At the beginning, I said, I'm only going to pick 15 books. And then you just saw me pick a lot more than 15 books. <laughs> So we will see what happens through October. I'm going to try to do October the same way I did back in June in my first readathon. I read one book at a time. I started with the longest books and I went to the shortest books. What I also did this time was I just tried to make sure that the books I wanted to read fit with the prompts so that I wasn't reading a bunch of prompt books and having a bunch of other books left to read. So hopefully this will work and... At least I'm really excited about trying and I have a cool bingo card to mark things off as I read it. So you'll be seeing this bingo card all through the month as I am updating with my wrap ups and how I'm doing with my bingo card. So I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.